Hi, my name is Arturo Farrell. I'm the Artistic Director and Founder of the Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance, and I want to welcome you to La Plaza at Digital Village. Tonight, we are presenting an innovative program in partnership with the groundbreaking New Mexico-based festival, Global Kirky. Cross-cultural crossover is a virtual version of this year's festival featuring four past festival acts that includes two uh, beloved members of the Alger artistic family, Rahim al Haj and Mariel Bilston. Composer, oud player, and vocalist Rahim al Haj was one of the featured guests on our Fandango at the Wall uh, film documentary available on HBO Max. And Mariel, who's one of the newest members of the afro Jazz Orchestra playing lead trombone here performs with the group Nation Beat. Other featured artists include Vivalda Ndula and Nohe and Su Soritos, all of them collaborating on one another's songs, deconstructing them and presenting them through a cross-cultural lens. The artistic director for this program was fellow New York bass drummer and uh, percussionist Scott Kettner. Um, you're gonna enjoy this a lot. It's very exploratory and it's a lot of fun. We're very happy to be able to, to participate with Global Kirky. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Tom Fruz, director of Global Kirky, New Mexico's annual celebration of world music and culture. I hope you and yours are faring healthy and well and keeping safe and sane. Tonight, in lieu of dancing under the moon at the National Hispanic Cultural Center for what would have been our 16th year, we are bringing you what we think you will agree is a very special presentation, the Global Kirky Cross-Cultural Crossover. Instead of trying to replicate Global Kirky Online, a virtually impossible task, we decided to create a program that reflects our mission of cross-cultural understanding through music and the arts. We think we've captured that in this program, a program that we are delighted to be bringing you for free due to our amazing supporters. That said, if you can donate to Global Kirky to help keep the festival strong, we would greatly appreciate it. But enough from me. Here to tell you more are this evening's hosts, Catalina Maria Johnson from the Chicago-based syndicated radio program Beat Latino, and New Mexico's own musical scribe, Mel Minter, from the blog Musically Speaking. Take it away, amigos. Hey, thanks, Tom. Hi, Catalina. Hi, Mel. Thank you, Tom. And welcome, everybody. Here we are. <laughs> I'm Catalina Maria Johnson, and I have a radio show, Beat Latino, beatlatino.com, if you want to check it out. And I'm based in Chicago, and my friend Mel is in New Mexico, Global Kirky's home, correct? That's correct. I'm just outside of Albuquerque in Corrales, and I have an online music journal called Musically Speaking, and here's the logo. And uh, you'll find that at melminter.com, and I hope you'll take a look at that. And I'm just really happy to be here with this amazing project. It is really quite an amazing thing. I mean, I, uh, I love covers. You know, I always like the way artists can kind of reimagine and make something fresh. But this is kind of covers like, you know, on steroids, <laughs> <laughs> the next level of covers, which is unique collaborations created for this moment, created for this time that we will share. And it involves four of uh, Global Kirkies, like famous, renowned alums. But the whole thing was organized, was uh, produced by one person. And what a process, what a process to deconstruct and reconstruct. And it, it's been just fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing collaboration because Scott Kettner, who's the, the gentleman who's responsible for pulling all of this together, um, he was dealing with people on different continents, people from different cultural backgrounds, from different musical backgrounds, and they all found a way to meet and create something really unique. And we're going to talk to Scott right now, right? Hey, He's come let's do that. <laughs> hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. And so we have uh, uh, Corrales, Albuquerque, Chicago, and where are you? I am in Maplewood, New Jersey. This is my studio here in Maplewood. This is, this is 
where it all began. This is where it all happened, actually. <laughs> so, I mean, this must have been this must have been a very challenging project on some levels. You had what Angola and uh, Brazil and the USA and Noel Los Santos Honduras and Iraq. I mean, Rahim. I mean, you had incredible kind of range of artists and styles, and yet you kind of pulled it all together as the overall producer. I and mean, tell us a little bit about the process. How did that happen? And, and you know, like what were some of the challenges? And maybe there were some good surprises along the way too. Yeah, well, it, uh, it all began with obviously Tom, you know, bringing us together and having the concept. And um, Tom asked me to, to help him produce the, the artist. And, and um, that from there, it began with conversations with, with the artists. And um, I think that everybody's coming from, from very important and strong traditions and, and cultural backgrounds. And I think as artists, we, when we feel that we mutually respect each other's traditions and backgrounds and where the music is coming from, um, that helps everybody kind of have a collective uh, collaborative spirit. And so that's really where it began. It began with a Zoom call um, and just talking and, and finding common ground and, and, and agreeing to um, step out of our comfort zones for this project and meet halfway in the collaboration. Because the, the idea was to reimagine these, these four songs with artists from different traditions. So it required some trust. Uh, it required a lot of trust and and understanding and respect for each other. So that's where that began. And then the the tracks started coming in. And I think that as we were recording remotely and putting adding our parts onto the tracks, they and we saw them kind of coming to life. Everybody got really excited, and everybody put in hundred and ten percent behind this project. So. I have to say it was it was kind of easy working with this because everybody is so talented and so you know they were just in. So it was how, it was how long ago did how long ago did you start on this, Scott? Um, it it, it took us a, a couple of months to to produce all of these tracks and and get them back and forth and get them edited and redo some things. Um, so yeah, it was it you know, and it's it's always a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a kind of just such a treat to hear the four songs. I'm really looking forward to seeing them. But I think what, you know, I kept finding a new favorite, you know, kept, I'd hear one about this is my favorite. <laughs> I hear another one. I was like, no, 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 this is my favorite. Um, they were all very special. And so they're, they're four songs that are originally either composed or, or, um, are actually performed by one artist in one tradition, in their tradition. And the first one is Algunas Cantan, which is actually a nation beat song from the new album, right? The Royal Chase just came out. So um, I that was reimagined. So tell us a little bit about the process. How did you, you know, how did you in literally like... Uh, <laughs> figure out a different way to play something that you're probably very familiar with. Yeah, I think um, producing that song was was one of the most challenging for me because we I've been living with that song for so long, the version, the Nation Beat version on the Royal Chase. Um, so, and I knew, and the purpose of this project was to do everything different than what's already been done. And since I've been living with this song in such an intense, for such an intense period of time, it was hard for me to reimagine my drum part changing and the rhythm changing. So what I did was I, I created a MIDI drum track, a, dr a drum track, like a groove that I would never naturally play on the drums. And I sent that to Noe's band, Randy and Justin, and asked them to lay their parts down on top of that. Wow. And from there, once I got their parts, I deleted the MIDI drum track and I just listened to them and I played to what they were playing. And that was how I was able to change my groove for that song. Wow. Yeah, that's it's really interesting, Scott, that the you know the the, the rhythmic change on that tune and and on some other tunes as well, it just it it changes the uh the whole feel of the song. And and you know the introduction of the of the guitar 
uh, as opposed to the horns from the in the original version. The horns disappear from a song that was written for horns, and then you've got Randy's guitar, which completely changes the texture of the of the song. It's really remarkable. Yeah. Yep. They really brought a lot a, a lot to this song, and to me, it's like it's it's very different from the nation beat version. And, and, and that was the, that was, that's the concept. And so I feel like we really accomplished it on this song. Yeah. I, I feel like the, the original version has a lovely kind of music box quality to it almost. And, and, and you guys kind of toughened it up a bit. And it, it says a lot that you were able to, to give up your, your drumming and then to feed back to them what they gave you. So it's, it's really a remarkable process. The spirit think, of collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the spirit of collaboration and really kind of uh, lessons for the pandemic. I mean, kind of like stepping out of your comfort zone, uh, stepping into some unfamiliar spaces, finding common ground, you know, and being able to be respectful and listen to the other person's, in this case, musical tradition. Um, it's just kind of a, I, I love this project. I also love because the pandemic has been very, very, you know, tragic on so many levels, but to find, you know, moments when art kind of gives you um, a different kind of space. Um, and in this case, art gave us like new, comp almost compositions reimagined anew. So new creativity and saying, no, the, you know, the creative spirit is still there. It's still going to get us through these times. We'll find the common ground. We'll uh, take these lessons. Yeah. The collaboration is kind of exactly what Global Kirk is about, you know, different cultures meeting, crossing over, cross-cultural crossover as we have here in this in this edition of Global Kirk. Uh, it's been it's been terrific. And I maybe we should have a listen to Algunas Kantan. Right, here we go. So this is uh, the first of the collaborations we'll hear today. And this is an originally a nation beat song on the Royal Chase, brand new album, but reimagined for this uh, Global Kirky cross-cultural crossover. Let's listen to Algunas Cantan. <laughs> Soñé con la tierra en unos dragones Donde el agua se viste de azul Cada roca fruto de sus colores Bailaron tiene el alma de danzón Junto al río, el viento y la montaña Despertando su inquieto corazón Todos juegan en contar a su alma Sin pensar en eterno como el sol Algunas cantan y otras lloran Pero el amor flota Algunas cantan y otras lloran Pero el amor flota Noches dibuja melodías que adormecen estrellas en fulgor y los bosques reposan de alegría en mis sueños quedaron alrededor algunas cantan y otras lloran pero el amor flota algunas cantan
Wow, that was terrific. And that's another part of this project is the video hooked up with the music. But before we go any further, I, I have to thank Santa Fe Brewing, which has been a supporter of the festival since 2007. So round of applause, get out the ammunition for Santa Fe Brewing. And, and while we're at it, the New Mexico Humanities Council, another very important supporter of this tremendous concert event. So thank you all. And um, where are you, Catalina? <laughs> In Chicago. <laughs> but um, while we're doing shout outs, I have one more to add. So there have been some key individuals, some key helpful folk from the very beginning with Global Kirky, which is going on 16 years, I believe. And one of those, Andres Martinez, is going to do a special shout out. And he's a logistics and tech expert with Global Kirky from the very beginning. Hi, my name is Andres Martinez. I'm the Technical Director of Performing Arts at the National Hispanic Cultural Center here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm happy to be given this opportunity to be recognized as one of the many people behind the scenes that helps make Global Kirky happen from year to year. I've been working behind the scenes for this event since its inception. If you've been to Global Kirky in the past, you may have seen me taking care of audio in the Journal Theater. Currently, though, my role is more of an overall logistics person. Along with ensuring the bands have everything they need to accomplish their tasks, I do things like make sure the lights are on in the Global Village, or help with permitting, or organize tenting, or coordinate with security. And I even pick up trash at the end of the night. Over the years, we've seen this festival grow tremendously and have seen many technological changes and challenges. Many have challenged our skills and resources, but we've always managed to somehow overcome these challenges, or at least hide them from you, and make the final product feel smooth and entertaining. This event is a massive undertaking with many behind the scenes people involved. So I would like to take a little time to recognize some of our staff members who also work long hours to try to ensure the success of this event. We've had many people over the years that are no longer part of our team that have been pivotal to the success of this event. I won't name them here, but we do appreciate all their efforts in helping this festival grow, and also the entire NHCC staff that are directly involved, including our custodians, security, education team, visual arts team, history and literary arts, and administrative staff, and of course, all of our volunteers. That said, I'd like to specifically recognize our current performing arts team who under normal circumstances would have tirelessly worked Global Kirky this year. Dr. Reeve Love, Director of Performing Arts. Pepe Gallardo, our resident lighting designer. Kirk Brown, our audio engineer. Santiago Candelaria, our stage manager. Our box office staff, David Rivera and Liz Miera. And a special thank you to all of our performing arts part-time staff members who put in full-time hours for this event. Rosemary Gallegos, Daryl Piper, Mimi Peavy, Lawrence Hohola, Haciel Martinez, Marco Valadez, and Maria Teresa Bustamante. On behalf of all of us behind the scenes, we hope to see you again next year, even if you don't actually see us. And we're back. We're back in the multi-city, global Kirky, cross-cultural currents, cross-cultural grooves. And we have some very, very special guests. We have Vival Dandula and Randy Sanchez and Mark Collins joining us and Mel. <laughs> Hi, Mel. Hi, everybody. Where Hi. is everybody? Hello. Hello. How y'all doing? Good, good. Great. Where are you, Randy? I'm in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I'm Vivalda? Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Wow. Yes. And Mark? I'm just, um, just outside of New York City. Really? Wow. So, and yet you all came together musically for a song that 
um, it's an earworm. It's a beautiful song, Jisabu. Uh, so this is originally Vivalda's song. So I'm just curious, Vivalda, tell us about the original version and then how you saw it change when, when you had these fine musicians join you. Well, uh, Gisabo is uh, what I consider a beautiful song and was uh, I composed it based on uh, Angolan traditional, um, what they say, proverbs. So, ah. it, uh, and the song says, Orenda ya soko, jizumba ya wasela. Orenda ya soko, jizumba ya wabela, kui mat pekena kizu vajihadi. It says, um, love is like war. It's very, very easy to start, but it's very complicated and difficult to end. So the song uh, um, go involved uh, on top of this uh, beautiful, not only this proverb and the other two proverbs, proverbs as well. And it was originally written and composed by myself. And uh, the initial uh, arrangement was made by Emilio Miller, who is a, a Grammy, a Latin Grammy winner producer, who actually made this beautifully arrangement using a little bit, not only my traditional and my roots, but as well a little bit of this uh, Latin flavor to the, to the music. Wow. And then all of a sudden, Mark and Randy and others <laughs> came in Absolutely. and changed it all. <laughs> uh, made a, had a, a, made a, a beautiful, beautiful work on this. Um, and all the musicians involved on the music, uh, uh, they did a very beautiful work on it. W one of the things that I did appreciate was that each one of uh, these amazing musicians, they took their time to listen to the music and they take their time to respect the the, the 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 other culture not only on my music but the other musics as well but i i truly uh, did appreciate very very much uh to uh, to have them to play the music and respect each one of the element mostly when they said oh, what do you think about here what do you think about that and i would say well we can implement this we can add this but can we take a little bit of this take a little bit of that just for me to have this sense of that that i'm still here in my music i'm still here <laughs> in my yeah. ground yeah yeah hey mark that that's a remarkable solo that you that you take on there. Could you tell us a little bit about about that? Because that brings a whole uh, you know, that brings some American jazz, I think, and some South African jazz into the mix. Well, uh, you know, first of all, the the the, the, the uh, I think about it like I was uh, uh, painting with sound in a sense. Uh, the canvas then was was so amazing. It was sort of easy for me to think about how I was going to contribute to uh, to what was already being done. So uh, first and foremost, you know the the, the arrangement and and the musicians who, who put put you know the, everything underneath the solo was was terrific. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, you know I was I was really thinking about how I could contribute to the overall uh, uh, picture, the overall uh, uh, project that was was being done. So you know when I was uh, Kind of crafting that and thinking about how I was going to solo on that, you know. The, first and foremost, my 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 thought my thought pattern was like, well, you know, uh, what does the music need? And from there, you know, I just kind of had to trust uh, my own mu musical background to 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 figure out well what would best uh, contribute to the to the to the to the music. So, uh, you know, you you mentioned a lot of uh, influences that that came across in the solo but that's you know in a sense i also have to think about myself as an artist uh what are my priorities uh and, and then what's important to me and then use that information uh to 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 then think figure out well how can those things add to uh, or contribute to the end product so the influences that you mentioned i mean totally uh, they're, they're there because, well, that's really just kind of who I am as a musician and what my influences are. Yeah, well. I, I'd say you figured it out, Mark. You figured out just what was needed. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, Randy, what about that guitar? Because you bring a whole different flavor in there. It's a kind of a Latin touch here with, with your guitar. 
Yeah, you you know, like uh, Vivaldo was saying, it it had that tinge of it, you know. And when we were talking about the, arranging this song, um, she had expressed that she wanted to, you know, keep a sense of identity in the song for herself. And so, you know, I'm I'm I don't I don't play that type of style. I, you know, I'm I'm very stylistic musician. Um, I'm very I'm self taught. Um, I do some studio work sometimes, but it's very specific to, to what I do. You know, it's, it's, it's not really just going in and laying stuff down. It's usually a particular flavor. So this was a challenge in the sense that I hadn't really done it. And I really didn't want to do it injustice by, by just doing something that sounded like it. You know, it's like, a, it's like doing a complicated uh, dance choreography and just kind of moving your feet and being like, well, it kind of looks like that, <laughs> you know, but yeah. there's, there's things going on. And so I had to listen to it and I, I listened to some versions she had sent me um, from, from some groups that were out there that she had did this song with and, and there's guitar in there. So at least I had some kind of uh, basis to, to really jump off of. And then it was like, uh, you know, like we're saying, how do we interject our own artistic flavor sort of into it? Right. And, um, you know, so I try to get some of those parts into some of the rhythms that I would I was feeling as far as I guess coming from a Latin background or what I what I normally would be playing. Yeah, and and, and the rhythm is quite different on the on the reimagined tune because um, it's not the it's 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 quite different from the original. And and talking to Scott earlier, he said he was using a Brazilian rhythm, Foro, I think is is the name and. Um, how did that affect you, Vivaldi, singing to a completely different rhythmic bass? Well, it, it didn't affect me much because I'm very used to the international world, to different. Mm -hmm. uh, I was exposed since a very early age to different uh, uh, cultures because of uh, I'm from Rwanda City and it's a very international city. And the music allowed me to travel the world and know different cultures and people. And uh, the other thing is that we have, my country has a very beautiful and close relationship, political and economic relationship relationship mm -hmm. with Brazil. So I'm used to hear music from Brazil. I'm used to hear this type of feeling. So when we, in, but, but, and the music sounds very different. So when the Scott sent actually the initial idea, he actually sent, I think three or five initial ideas for drumming and the beginning the the pandero that he was playing um i have to listen several times actually I, I think i took more than a week to listen to all of them so i could um put myself in his position as an independent uh, in an in independent artist and and and, and using his own or, or, or his own feelings on the music and try to adapt the music that already existed to this new world that he added and made the music very beautiful yeah. yeah, it's really kind of fascinating to me uh, on a lot of levels um, what everybody's been saying because I've been uh, the conversation first, you know, of course, there's the common ground of, between Angola and Brazil, which would be found. Uh, but also just like as a model, like the cross-cultural crossover is very much I'm hearing it as I hear your comments as a model for not doing cultural misappropriation or appropriation because when musicians take on you know other the projects the music projects of other cultures sometimes they don't do it carefully or respectfully so kind of finding that balance between the respect and the care and the integrity of the original um, culture cultural product but then having other musicians bring their own spirit and genius carefully and respectfully and the listening to each other. It's beautiful. It's really like on a macro level. It's kind of taking me to like, yeah, this is what the world could be like. <laughs> I, I really feel the world is like that. You know, I, I our world. I, yeah, our, our world is is definitely like this, you know, and I when I when I when we had this idea to do this sort of um, collaboration with all these artists, you know, of course, I was like, this is going to be great. You know, it'll be it'll be great. And then when you're there and you start putting these pieces together, you start to realize you do have to be concerned about, like you're saying, Catalina, about the uh, the cultural appropriation of things, you know? I mean, this is important that we keep these things in mind, in music, in art, in our daily lives, you know? And how do we adapt to these cultures without 
forgetting where they come from, you know, and it was very important that, you know, like I said, Vivaldi said a certain parameters on these songs, but yet still gave us uh, our freedom to also express ourselves within her song. But we still needed some some sort of, you know, guidelines, at least so we wouldn't, you know, I, I don't know, I think we could have came to something similar. But I think with that kind of guidance, it, it really resonated with me and it kept me sort of on point. And then I was able to find my own voice in there. So, yeah, yeah. you know, as as the world kind of gets smaller, in a sense, uh, you know, I think this going to really happen quite often where influences are kind of start merging. And uh, this was really great in that we had the opportunity to kind of uh, speak with the originators of the music mm -hmm. and, and be able to contribute uh, in a way that I think it, it put, very much is like a model of, of how it should be and that we're all collaborating and speaking and discussing and making sure that everything is respectful and works great. Oh, One yeah. I have the chance to tell you, I love, love, love both of you, all of them, but Mark and Randy, but Randy already knows. <laughs> Mark, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I loved, I loved what you did. I loved it. It was Thank it was you. Fun. I really appreciate that. I'm glad I can <laughs> contribute. Jeez, Abu, coming up.
Located in the scenic valley of Dixon, New Mexico, Vivoc Wineries was started in 1998 by the young Padberg brothers. Vivoc, a mountaineering term meaning high altitude refuge, is seated at 6,000 feet, making it one of the highest altitude wineries in the world and a destination like no other. The winery's old world style wines have won golds at international wine competitions around the world and rated in the 90s by esteemed wine critic James Suckling of Wine Spectator fame. New Mexico True Certified, Vivoc wines are crafted in temperature-controlled stainless steel tanks, then aged in French oak breeks. Every step of the process is lovingly done by hand, from picking and sorting the grapes to bottling and corking the finished wine. Vivoc also has a gorgeous patio that overlooks organically farmed estate vineyards where you can socially distance and enjoy wine or any of 14 local craft beers on tap. The winemakers and their wives invite you to escape into the almost 400-year-old story of New Mexico wine with each exquisite sip. Hello, and that was Gisabu. That was such a wonderful song. The Valda Ondulas Gisabu reimagined for this cross cultural, cross cultural global Kirky program. And I want to thank some of our sponsors. Got a shout out, give some love to Bibak. And they've been a supporter for over a decade of Global Kirky. You can sample Vivox wine I have at Global Kirky. But if you don't want to wait till 2021 to check it out, there'll be a link where you can purchase Vivox wine. And also want to thank the Hispano Chamber of Commerce for their constant support. So, so hey Mel, what's happening? What's coming up next? Well, we've got a very interesting interview coming up next. You know, the National Hispanic Cultural Center has been the site for Global Kirky from the beginning. And a fabulous campus with multiple performance venues. It's just a beautiful layout and, and perfect for the event. And now the Cultural Center has a brand new executive director, Josefa Gonzalez Mariscal. And we are going to have an interview with Josefa and Rob Martinez, a noted musician who's performed at Albuquerque, at, at Global Kirky, excuse me, several times. Also, the New Mexico State historian will be interviewing Josefa right now. Hola. Hello. Bienvenidos. I'm Rob Martinez, state historian of New Mexico and a musician. And it's great to be part of Global Kirky. 2020. Today, I have the pleasure and honor of speaking with the new director of the National Hispanic Cultural Center, which hosts Global Kirky every year. Her name is Josefa Gonzalez Mariscal. And I just want to welcome you virtually to Albuquerque and to New Mexico. So welcome. Thank you, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I am so excited to be in Global Albuquerque. Global Kirky in this pandemic, 
it is amazing that uh, we're doing it this way, particularly for a festival that has been so important for the National Hispanic Cultural Center. So I am very honored to have been asked to be part of it. Even well, fantastic. Fantastico. Well, I've been lucky to perform and participate uh, many times through the years at Global Kirky. And it's an amazing festival, but that obviously represents the Latino community, the Hispanic community, but it represents the world, which is fantastic. How did you first hear about uh, Global Kirky? When I uh, started reviewing what programs we had, and one of the ones that was always mentioned as one of the biggest successes at the center was Global Kirky. So I asked all my staff, what is it? And they all told me little versions of it, but everybody always talked about it with the greatest enthusiasm. So that's why I am looking forward to hosting it at the center next year. Well, I know I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, we need to move into the future, but this year we're gonna have a, a virtual concert, but um, let's talk a little bit about that. How do you see uh, Global Kirky fitting in at the National Hispanic Cultural Center? I mean, it's a fantastic uh, campus uh, that you have over there, uh, right here in Albuquerque at the National Hispanic Cultural Center, but it also puts Global Kirky in the center of our beautiful city, but it also puts the National Hispanic Cultural Center on the world stage. So. What do you foresee as the new director uh, for this uh, marriage between the Hispanic Cultural Center and Global Kirky? Well, one of the things that I am trying to do is to bring the National Hispanic Cultural Center to its full potential of its name, being a national center well known. And once you are recognized nationally, it expands to the international uh, audience too. The pandemic has given us many opportunities to reach beyond Albuquerque because all our programming currently has been virtual. Well, muy bien, muy bien, Josefa. Well, thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, we love having you, and I can't wait to see you at Global Kirky uh, next time. So uh, I know we can't wait till September 30th, 2020 for the virtual Global Kirky event. Hasta pronto, Josefa. Hasta pronto, Rob. A pleasure. Thank you, thank you, Santa Fe Brewing Company, a supporter, strong and staunch supporter of Global Kirky since 2007. And thank you also to the New Mexico Humanities Council for their constant and generous support. And so, hey, Mel, what's coming up? What's happening next? Well, what we've got next is a song from Rahi Malhaj, the noted Iraqi oud player. And joining him will be Mario Bildston, trombonist from Nation Beat, and bassist Justin Bransford from Noe y Sus Santo. So come on in, guys. Hello. Well, hello. hello. So hello. where is everybody? OK, Mario, where are you? I'm in uh, New York City. Cool. In Justin? Washington Square Park. <laughs> oh, cool. My old neighborhood. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Rahim, where are you? Uh, I am in Istanbul, Turkey. Wow. wow. Istanbul, Turkey. So this song, Rahim, uh, yes. it's yours. It's your song originally. So tell us a little bit more about kind of like how you composed it. Like set up the context for the original version. When did you compose it? And, and it's called Missing You. And then it turns into Missing You, My Querida. So tell us a little bit more about that, just kind of the beginning, uh, well, the foundation. Yeah, this is what happened actually when I started to about uh, a project of, uh, it's called Little Earth, and uh, which I composed the music around 
uh, a lot of genres and a lot of name a musician and and I had to have this 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 idea of bringing all the musicians together uh, from different continents and different backgrounds, different. So I composed the music for all of them, and then happened that uh, Tom Fruge, uh he said, "Oh, you are going." I think I, I was remember I was in Los Angeles to to record uh, a piece for um, Hussein Amoum, Iranian name player. Anyway, so that time there is a, a, a piece that I, I, I composed it and and then uh, Maria Dibars and, and she was there and I was like, oh wow, this is a piece that's about missing motherhood. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I was just really devastated about losing my mom and being away from her and being uh, really far away from my home. And that was specifically written for for a mother who really cares and nurturing and uh, and also yearning for for that feeling around 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 our ourselves because when you when you exiled when you travel when you go away that's all we need we need the, the we need mothers you know we, we need our 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 first voice and then we the hug from our mom. And that's why I started to compose this piece for uh, you know, Raheem, Maya Dibaz. Yeah. Raheem, it's such a beautiful, beautiful, hypnotic, deep song. Just a beautiful version, the original version. But the new version, the reimagined version, is equally beautiful, I would say, and, and brings some new life to this wonderful song. And can Mario, can you tell us a little bit about your contribution because it's it's highly unusual to hear a trombone in an Iraqi composition. Yes. <laughs> um, and it yeah. works. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it was really a treat to play on this track. Um, the only real context I was given to sort of go with is to sort of um, play around the melody and then to play a solo. Um, and I, you know, the trombone is a very lyrical instrument, at least it can be. And so I was sort of thinking about how would I sing these parts? How would I sing through this melody um, as a, a vocalist? Because just like your voice doesn't have any buttons, your trombone doesn't have any buttons either. And so there's a lot of sort of expression you can do in the song. Um, it's really a treat to hear more of the back story to the song because we, I didn't know any of that until just now. Um, and, you know, I, I, I relate a lot to that. My family's in California and I live in New York and I don't get to see them very often. So I need my mom's hug all the time. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was just a beautiful song. And um, so thank you for having me, really. It's, it was a real treat. Oh, thank you. And, and Justin, you, I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful introduction. I, I know you play through the whole tune and, and with great tenderness and a light touch. But that Arco introduction is just, just lovely. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I, um, anytime I can play with the bow on the bass, it's, it's an opportunity for me to to uh, express something unique. And it was wonderful to try to embrace the character of, of Rahim's melody a little bit. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, well, I, I think you embraced it. And, and Rahim, what about the, the percussion that was added? There's Brazilian percussion under this is, Iraqi tune. He's bad ass, man. This guy is a really <laughs> bad ass. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, really, I give him a lot of credit for it, to be honest, because this kind of, it's not easy uh, um, rhythm. And, and uh, what he did, he's really, really beautiful. And I couldn't really imagine that this melodic, kind of sad um, tune will turn into that kind of uh, sense of, of enjoyment, sense of um, gathering. I mean, that was so beautiful. I mean, yeah. I mean that's a rhythm. I mean, uh, uh, Scott, he's like I said, he's, I cannot say more than he's a badass. That's it. <laughs> I also understand that you wanted a saxophone on the tune, and there is a saxophone on the tune from Paul. <laughs> why, did, why did you want that sax? Well, that because the sax is kind of has the music, a human voice in it. I mean, the trombone is always melodic also, you know, vocal. 
like Mrazi said, but uh, saxophone is more deeper. I mean, the same voice, but it's deeper in that, in that regard. So I think in my own interpretation to any instrument, and I said, each instrument has a voice and each instrument has a character and color. So it's about how you interpret your instrument to that kind of um, to that kind of music, and that's what they related. All of the in instruments are related to each other, and the yeah. end will, will will feel like how beautiful to join all the musicians from around the world, put them in one melody, and then to to celebrate the the, the humanity, celebrate the color right. differences. The, right. the, the, the I mean, to battle. me, yeah, to me, it's definitely that's what all of these songs have done, but. Uh, this one, I think, because it was really, I uh, had never expected that kind of common ground. You know, some of the others because of either a colonial history in Portugal or uh, linguistic or just kind of, you know, New Orleans bringing all the different kinds of things together. There was a little bit more like, oh, that, 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 that might work. But this one was, was so unusual in terms of the collaborations. I really, it was a surprise to find... Two things. One is like what you mentioned is the humanity. I mean, no matter where we're from, you know, we all had mothers or we have mothers. Uh, if we're lucky, we have uh, had wonderful mothers or wonderful mother-like pe people in our lives and how much we miss, you know, their hug and their embrace. And the other thing which is so fascinating is um, how everybody, like you're talking about, each instrument has a voice and also kind of like each people you know, having a voice and being able to add it to the mix and how rich, how enriching it is to have more voices that are different and not the same old all the time. <laughs> well, speaking of voices, we have to mention Vivalda, uh -huh. who sings on this track, who just brings yeah. a beautiful, yeah. soulful vocal to this, mm -hmm. to this tune and a special, a special rhythm too to this to this vocal, and it's quite different from the original. They're both beautiful, but Vivaldi brought something just a little bit yeah. different to it that, that brought something new to the song. It's really lovely, and right. we should probably listen to it. Yeah, it's time to listen to it. <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you. And so here thank comes- Thank you very much. Here comes Missing You. Missing You, my querida reimagined for global Kirkies cross-cultural crossover.
Located in the scenic valley of Dixon, New Mexico, Vivoc Wineries was started in 1998 by the young Padberg brothers. Vivoc, a mountaineering term meaning high altitude refuge, is seated at 6,000 feet, making it one of the highest altitude wineries in the world and a destination like no other. The winery's old world style wines have won golds at international wine competitions around the world and rated in the 90s by esteemed wine critic James Suckling of Wine Spectator fame. New Mexico True Certified, Vivoc wines are crafted in temperature controlled stainless steel tanks, then aged in French oak breeks. Every step of the process is lovingly done by hand, from picking and sorting the grapes to bottling and corking the finished wine. Vivoc also has a gorgeous patio that overlooks organically farmed estate vineyards where you can socially distance and enjoy wine or any of 14 local craft beers on tap. The winemakers and their wives invite you to escape into the almost 400 year old story of New Mexico wine with each exquisite sip. Wow, that's a beautiful tune from Rahim Al Haj, reimagined for crossover global Kirky. And hey, we have to thank Vivac Wines, great sponsors for quite some time. In addition to that, again, the Albuquerque Hispano Chamber of Commerce for their support for so many years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Catalina, what's next? Hey, well, first. This is the first time I get to say what's next. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited to have some special guests. We're going to be talking about the reconstruction, deconstruction, and reconstruction of Pajarito, of a song that we'll hear after this. So we have from Honduras, Noelia Sosa, the vocalist for Noé Santos, New Mexico's own. And then from Nation Beat, we have Paul Carlin, sax, and Susafon. <laughs> we have Joe I hope I said that correct, from Nation Beat. So, um, so tell us more, I guess, set up the context. Let, let's get started. It's always nice to know the original story of Pajarito. Tell us about that, Noe. And then we'll talk about how Pajarito became transformed. Oh, my God. So, first of all, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. And Pajarito is an original song from Noe Santos. It's kind of this kind of vibe of the north of New Mexico style. And um, and for sure, Paul and Joey, they're, they're making amazing arrangements with incredible talents in this song, which is, when I hear it, I really feel so much rich, rich of, of rhythms. And, um, and Pajarito is kind of a love story from um, Mexico. It's a bird, you know, who fall in love. And I think the rhythm is incredible and it's high energy. So for me to play this with this in, amazing um, arrangement is, is just a, is out of the, of the world. I love to see Vivalda to sing some of the parts in, in, in Portuguese too. So that's very exciting for me and have another singer to, uh, to join us in this amazing song. So it's my understanding also that all the horns throughout all four tunes were arranged by one of our guests here for this segment. Paul, right? <laughs> yep. That's, yeah. yeah, that's correct. So yeah, I did the arrangements, horn arrangements on Pajarito and uh, Chisabu, and then I played a solo on uh, Rahim's song, Missing You. Wow. So, so yeah, and uh, you know, it's always, I, I just got the track and I hadn't heard it before and and to hear Noe talk about it, um, it really helps my understanding because when I got it, the track, I just thought, this is great. Like, the, the energy was great. And, and I thought, this track is already done, really. You know, like, in terms of the arrangement, I, I mean, I feel like all I did was put some frosting on it a little bit, you know, because I just followed what was, I honestly followed what was there. It was so complete already and in such a great way that it was really easy. Actually, that one, you know, uh, I, I literally wrote it in my head in a day and, and wow. it came out, you know, maybe one or two spots I checked later, but uh, it, it was right on the money. And I, you know, I 
credit that a lot to the strength of the track that I got. That's interesting. The awesome. foundation. Wow. Yeah. So Joe, tell us a little bit more about how, how you approached bringing your voice. Yeah, I love, um, thanks for having me, by the way. I love, <laughs> I love um, doing things like this because I try to play the sousaphone like an electric bass most of the time anyways. So that's where <laughs> I'm from. Um, so I listened to a little bit of what's already there, um, but um, it was nice to have Paul arrange a horn line where the sousaphone was treated more like a horn than the bass instrument. So it was cool to allow me to be a little more of an in-between space between <clears throat> the actual bass and between the horns themselves. So that gave me a little more freedom in what I'm playing. Um, yeah. I always think of, uh, you know, the sousaphone in, in Mexican banda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's you yeah, right. It's yeah. such a, it's uh, it's fascinating to me to see how, um, like what you were saying. The you know what, it, I've heard that since our history in Latin music is really pretty much Black Indigenous, with like then the collision of the European uh, culture, that um, because at, at the beginning the instruments, you know, were not made available. The, the main instrument that was maybe available was some kind of percussion, even using your feet or, you know, right. using a box, that all instruments, somebody said it, in Latin music, every instrument is played, you know, rhythmically. It's got mm -hmm. a rhythmic, you know, boom, really like the drum is the African drum is the undercurrent. So to, to hear that being carved out in different ways, in different songs and with different instruments, it's just fascinating. I love this. Is this track is like irresistible? If it, if it, if it doesn't make your spirit soar, you know, check your pulse. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, that's it, interesting um, what you say about that because I was thinking about what Joe said, and uh, one of the points I did want to make was exactly what Joe said that you know, Nation Beat being a brass band. Usually the sousaphone is playing the role of the bass, and, the, and it's in our band it's the sousaphone and the drum set that's the leader Scott Kettner. And so for these projects, I did think of it more like, okay, I think I, I think what I have here is four horns, you know, the four four horns: the sousaphone, tenor saxophone, uh, trombone, and trumpet from Nation B. And I need to think of them as a horn section. But um, but also, you know, the yeah, the traditions that we are trying to come out of, you know, that we relate to. Definitely use those instruments, all those instruments, those, the, the um, horns I just mentioned, also we're using them as rhythmically as we can. So that kind of ties into what you were saying. You know, it, it, part of it too is what the listener brings to what they're hearing, because when I hear those brass instruments, my head goes right to New Orleans. Mm. I just, <laughs> it's capable. And, and um, that, that for me added another flavor to this track and right. this, this track is killer. I mean, it is just, everybody is on it. I mean, we have Raheem on Oud, we oh, have yeah. the horn section. I mean, we have both vocalists. We've got Randy is on it. Everybody's on this track and everybody's just popping. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say also what's wonderful is to compare it to the original and, and not in, compare in a good way because you get the richness of both. And this is a brand new album, right? Tempestad. Tempestad. No y Santos, you can catch the original Pajarito on Tempestad, which came yeah. out this year. So um, you can, you know, get the richness of both the foundation and then the actual beautiful reconstruction and transformation. Yeah. Yeah, and for us, it's a it's an honor. It's, it's, so we are really appreciate everyone to afford a different scenarios of this song. And uh, and yeah, Tempestad just released in May twenty second this year. And yeah, we are promoting our album, our first <laughs> album together. <laughs> the debut. Wow. Well, so well, so is it time to hear Pajarito? Well, of course. Before we do that, <laughs> We have one little thing we need to do first. Okay. Um, Dr. Reeve Love, who's the director of performing arts at the National Hispanic Cultural Center and has been close to Global Kirky from the beginning. Dr. Love is retiring and we're gonna have a short interview with Reeve, with Tom Frouge, uh interviewing her coming up first and then we'll go to the tune. 
Hi, Tom Fruge here, back again. I am here, at least virtually, with Dr. Reeve Love, the Director of Performing Arts at the National Hispanic Cultural Center. As you may know, the NHCC has been the site of Global Kirky since the very beginning. And Reeve has been a behind the scenes collaborator, ally, and friend to the festival since then too. Dr. Love is retiring soon, leaving the NHCC and by extension, Global Kirky. And so, as this is her last Global Kirky in an official capacity, I could not, would not let it pass without this humble tribute to her. Hi, Reeve. Hi, Tom, and thank you. That was lovely. Oh, well, I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I love you dearly. You know that. Yeah, well, you know that I love you, too. Yes, and we're going to miss been, you as part of back behind the scenes of Global Kirky. Well, it's been a wonderful relationship for all these years. It has. So I want to ask you, because I don't think people know this, um, when did you start at the NHCC? In 1999, the end of July in 99. And uh, you, you came in as the director of programming? I did, director did. of performing arts. And when did the NHCC start? In, um, hmm. it was a few years, maybe not a few, maybe just a couple of years before that, but it was run out of Santa Fe for a couple of years before we even went into temporary quarters in Albuquerque. And I came on shortly after that. We were down on 6th Street in 6th and Central on in the old Quickle building, which is now condos. And I was there until the center opened on its current premises in October of 2000. Over the years, you have, I'm sure, seen both the NHCC and Global Kirky grow and mature. Any observations, recollections, remembrances you would like to share? There, there are so many. Just being able to hear and to meet some of the people who have, are really iconic. I think meeting Buffy St. Marie had to have been a high point. That was at Global Kirky. That was a global Kirky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She put on a she put on a hell of a show that year. I have to say, I have to say. Reeve, before we get back to our final music presentation, is there anything you want to share with our audience? I would really like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for supporting Global Kirky. We're supporting the National Hispanic Cultural Center over the years. This, it's an event that has been very dear to my heart since its inception. And it's just, a, it shows the wonderful ways in which people from all over the world can come together with something as positive, as uplifting, as unifying as music. Thank you. I just want to say that it's been an honor and a pleasure to work with you over the years and more to have our relationship grow into a beautiful friendship that I will continue to cherish. Oh, thank you, as will I. And I have to mention how much I have loved doing the International Cinema Series with you and all the wonderful films that we've been able to show over the past several years under the umbrella of Global Kirky, because normally our film programming is mission tied. So we show films from from the US, from Spain, from Latin America, but always with the Hispanic Latinx focus. And the International Cinema Series has allowed us the opportunity to show some absolutely amazing films from all over the world. So that is a, that's a very special part of my memories of Global Kirky and my experience with the event. I'm glad you threw in the International Cinema Series because we have not mentioned that during this program and uh, it will return in 2021, just like Global Kirky, uh, physically. It may even return prior to September. We're talking to the center about doing an interim one and uh, hopefully you'll be at all those screenings, Reeve. That would be so, wonderful. Yes. So since this is your last official Global Kirky appearance, I would love if you introduced our final musical presentation. Take it away. It would be my honor and my pleasure. This is a performance by all the groups that you have seen performed in this 
in this grand finale. The song is Pajarito, and it is a song by the group Noe y Sus Santos. Please enjoy.
That was Pajarito, an all-star, all-band, all four Global Kirky alums grand finale. And it's been a pleasure to be with you here. And thank you to all the sponsors, in particular, the New Mexico Humanities Council, the Santa Fe Brewing Company, the Albuquerque Hispano Chamber of Commerce, Vivac Winery, and all the individuals that donated to Global Kirky to make this cross-cultural crossover presentation possible. Hey, and thanks to the viewers. Thanks for tuning in to this one-of-a-kind, remarkable presentation. And, you know, if you'd like to help keep Global Kirky strong into the future, consider a tax-deductible donation. Just go to globalkirky.org for more information, and you can see that right across the bottom of your screen. You know, we shall gather again. Yes, we shall, Mel, and we're going to gather, if not before, we'll gather around the music, coincide around the music. We shall gather again in Global Kirky, in Albuquerque, September 17th and 18th, 2021. We shall gather again. Sounds good. See you there. Pero estabas muy lejos y no alcancé a llegar 